Hi guys, I'm coming to you from the semi-distant past because when this video is supposed to go up, I will be in Japan, but I'm filming it here in my bedroom now so that I have something to post while I'm away so that my channel does not go totally dead while I'm gone because I know I probably won't have time to really comment or watch a lot of videos while I'm over there. I don't want to totally fall outside of the booktube realm for an entire month. So I am going to do an on my shelf video. I got these numbers from both my last video and then some from Twitter. If you don't know, it's really simple. You're just given two coordinates. One corresponds to a bookshelf, the other corresponds to a book on that shelf, and then you talk about it. So it's a way of sharing books that you might not necessarily have an excuse to talk about very often on your channel, and I'm excited about it. I believe I received 10 numbers total, so I'm splitting it five and five so I can make two videos because as you may know about me, I have troubles with brevity, so I wanted to be able to talk about these books for a little bit of length and not feel pressured to cut it down. So the first set of coordinates that I got was 11 and 11, and I'm very excited to share this book because I love it very much and I've had no opportunity to ever talk about it on my channel, but it is the complete poetry and essential prose of John Milton. This is a textbook that I used for my John Milton class, but I've kept it because I really enjoyed reading Milton. Well, I really enjoyed reading Milton's poetry, let's say that. I don't really necessarily like his prose that much, but I am proud that I have read almost this entire book, and it is quite large. I also really like this copy because it has all of my notes that I took throughout the class, so in case I ever wanted to revisit Paradise Lost for any reason, I can really easily pinpoint like the start of a speech by Satan, or a speech by God, or a speech by Raphael. And having read Paradise Lost is one of my greatest achievements, I think, as a reader, so I'm really proud of this. Uh, Paradise Lost is beautiful. It's like 10,000 lines of metered poetry, and it's gorgeous. It's just like 400-year-old Bible fan fiction so it's really really great time Satan's speeches are like one of some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read um, and I highly encourage you to read Paradise Lost even though it is quite a feat it's very challenging it's very long but it's amazing so I'm gonna share a really short excerpt from Paradise Lost because I'm now reminiscing about its glory and I could share a lot of things like ideally you would share one of Satan's speeches but they're really long so I'll spare you that but here is just a really beautiful set of lines from Paradise Lost, book eight. And this is about when Adam first awakens in the Garden of Eden. For a man to tell how human life began is hard, for who himself beginning knew, desire with thee still longer to conserve induced me. As new waked from soundest sleep, soft on the flowery herb, I found me laid in balmy sweat, which with his beams the sun soon dried, and on the reeking moisture fed. Straight toward heaven my wandering eyes I turned, and gazed a while the ample sky, till raised by quick instinctive motion up I sprung, and thitherward endeavoring, and upright stood on my feet, about me round I saw, hill, dale, and shady woods, and sunny plains, and liquid laps of murmuring streams, by these creatures that lived, and moved, and walked, or flew, birds on branches warbling, all things smiled, with fragrance and with joy my heart o'erflowed." So amazingly beautiful. I, again, highly encourage you to read Paradise Lost, but again, it's kind of old and it's very, very long poetry. So that might be an immediate turnoff for like most people. Next is 1-1, one, one, and I arbitrarily decided long ago that the number one shelf in my apartment is my comic book shelf, so I have Alison Bechdel's Fun Home. Fun Home is a graphic memoir about Alison Bechdel's life growing up in a funeral home, but also about her discovering herself and discovering more about her family, and it's beautiful and very eloquent. It's full of literary reference, and the narrative style and the comic book art is so unique. It's really beautiful. It has this really cool green-gray wash all over it, and also I think it's fascinating because Alison Bechdel actually, actually staged photos for each panel before she drew them, so she would have a photographic reference for each panel, every panel in this entire book. I would recommend this to both people who love graphic novels and who don't like them, because I think this is really accessible to everybody, and its narrative style is very unique, very complex, and very nuanced, and I would highly recommend it to everybody. I've read it twice, in an LGBT class and in a comic book class, and both times I read it I discovered really interesting things, and the way we analyzed it from two different classes. From a comic standpoint and an LGBT standpoint, we like noticed different things, and it's just a great novel to analyze and pick apart, or just read for fun, but you know me, I like to analyze stuff. 
Number four is my YA shelf. So number 412 is Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Levithan. This is the first I ever read of either John Green or David Levithan. I have not yet since read any more David Levithan, but I have read more John Green. I'm not my favorite of what I've read of his. It's fine, it's YA, so you're kind of getting what you should expect from a YA novel. It's not necessarily mind-blowing or crazy, but it is fun and interesting. It's about two teenage boys who are both named Will Grayson. Will Grayson A is written by John Green and Will Grayson B is written by David Levithan and you see how their stories start to overlap and it's interesting because they come from two different narrative styles so they're really distinctively different people and it's interesting. If you like John Green, go for it. Also, my copy is signed to me. Next, I got the numbers 10 and 11 and this is a really fun one that I'm also really excited to talk about and it is the Chushin Gura, which is the story of the loyal retainers. They made a movie based off of this play starring Keanu Reeves called like the 47 Ronin or something dumb like that and it, apparently it was terrible. I refused to see it because just remembering that it existed made me very angry. But this is a play from the Edo period of Japan so it was like the early modern period it was a criticism of some events that actually took place, so they said it a few hundred years in the past just to stave off the government's disapproval. It was written by, I think, three different playwrights. Each playwright wrote different acts, so they don't necessarily really string together with any type of linear flow, but it's interesting. and has one of my favorite scenes of all time of any play ever. It's about samurai, right? So it's got a lot of bushido, which is the samurai way, and honor, and that type of thing. And the whole plot is surrounding how this master had to commit seppuku, which is ritual disembowelment. The retainers underneath him are kind of mad about it. So they're trying to get an act of revenge, and their revenge is going to end with them all committing seppuku. So this guy does it. He disembowels himself, but then he has to like sign a paper, so he does it with his entrails, and it's really brutal, and I don't know. It's definitely not for everybody, but if you are interested in Japanese literature, this might be something to check out. It's a really weird ass play and I'm not doing it any justice by trying to describe it. It's a lot of violence in samurai, so if you're looking for that you will find it here for sure. But the story is kind of bonkers and doesn't really necessarily make a whole lot of sense. This was written in 1748 so it's kind of old and it's definitely super weird so it's not for everybody. I would not probably not recommend this to most people that I know but I love it very very dearly. And the last book I'm sharing was Shelf 8, Book 18, and it is one of my two copies of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is a beautiful UK edition of The Great Gatsby. I cherish it because I don't have that many UK copies of books because I live in the United States. And I think it's really cool. I love the sleek design of it. I have the super old Great Gatsby. I think this is the same edition as the one that I read in school. I won it from a giveaway from the YouTuber Skeletons on My Shelves and I'm still really excited to have it. I haven't actually read The Great Gatsby since I won it, but I really should and I'm really just like, it makes me happy to know that this is on my shelf. Like I said before, I'll probably do another one of these in the nearish future. I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye!